Next up is the actual processor built out of TTL components. So first of all, I will remove the power supply. And what we're going to do is solder on all these components. If you have separate IC sockets, solder them in first. In this case, the sockets are the ICs are already in the socket. So that's not needed. Otherwise, you could practice soldering in these sockets first. The manual has a list of all the integrated circuits with their numbers and the types. But this information is also present on the PCB. So the PCB shows you which component goes where. And as I said before, they are aligned in the same manner on the conductive uh, foam. So it's quite easy to see which component goes where. When soldering in a component, make sure that the orientation is correct. So there's this half moon shape on the component that's also present on the board. And again, they won't fit right away, so we need to use the table to straighten the pins a little bit. Okay, the pins are straight. Again, take a look at the orientation and insert it into the board. Now, it might be the case that uh, one of the uh, co uh, condensators, uh, capacitors, uh, excuse me, are in the way. So you can just gently push them out a little bit to make room. Now I'm having a little trouble inserting this, so it's a bit fidgety. Yeah, there it goes. So this one actually stays put. So it's the correct one for this location. It's the correct orientation. So we can solder it in. So again, first I do the corners, double check it is fine, and then do the rest. The problem with these components is that they have so many pins that if you make a mistake and want to remove the whole component, that's quite a hassle. You need to desolder all the pins, and even then it's actually quite difficult to remove it. So it pays off to do a double check before you actually start soldering all of the pins. I see a little excess solder, so I will remove that with my fingernails. And this looks fine, so we move on to the next one. The 153, the 153, bend, So again, I use this trick to use my finger underneath to keep it in place. Solder two pins. Check. Position is correct. It fits on the board quite nicely. Again, are we happy? Yes. Next one. Two, eight, three. And so on for all the components on the board.
I've done soldering all the chips on except the RAM and the EEPROM. In my case they're already in the socket and there's no need to take them out and put them in later again. In fact it's rather difficult to get those chips into their sockets so it's actually better to keep them in. The RAM chip has really sturdy pins so that's easy, that's an easy fit. The EEPROM has very thin pins and they are easy to bend. So before you solder them in, check to see if they're all in line and if not, bend them back to the correct position. It should just drop in to position. And then you can solder it and again make sure that the orientation is right. And first do the corners Then do a double check, it's correct, and then we can solder all the pins. See there is a little bit of solder besides of the pin, I'll use my fingernail to get rid of that. And then the RAM chip, orientation. Double check, it's in correctly. When we finish doing all the chips, we do a double check. Are they all in the correct orientation? And more importantly, have we soldered all the pins? Have, haven't we forgotten any? And are there any places where there is a bit of excess solder that we can get rid of? Are all the solder joints ok and is there no shortcut connecting two pins together that shouldn't be connected. The solder has resin and that can leave a little bit of residue. You can scrape that off using your fingernail if you like or you can use a toothbrush to brush the board clean. Well I had already checked all the solder joints so the next step is to apply power again, so make sure there's no metal here and we see the power OK LED. So that's all we can check for now, there is no short, so that's so far so good. And we can move on to the next step.